Hello everyone. So today we're going to go over section 4.3, permutations when all objects are distinguishable. So we'll be using this formula, n factorial over n minus r factorial for today, where n is the number of different objects that are available, and r is the number of objects that is chosen to form the permutations. So if we look at example number one, there are 10 songs and we are going to be making playlists using six out of the 10 songs. And the question is how many different six songs playlists are possible? So in the first spot, there are 10 songs that we can choose. In the second spot, there are nine songs remaining, and then eight song, then seven, then six, and finally five song. So if these numbers were multiplied together, we'll get 151,000 and 200 different playlists. So if we were to use the formula instead, then we have 10 and then permutation, and then we are selecting six out of the 10 songs. That means we have 10 factorial, and that will be divided by 10 minus six factorial. So here we have then 10 factorial over 4 factorial. And from here we can expand 10 factorial, which of course is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 and then times 4 factorial. So we can uh, stop expanding there since 4 factorial also appears in the denominator. Oops. So from here, these two 4 factorials can be eliminated and we have the same as before, 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5, which we know from before is 151,000 200 playlists. So the idea here is that instead of having to think about what numbers are to be multiplied and writing them out like we did here, we can simply apply the formula to find the same answer. Okay, so let's look at example number two. Now we're going to use the formula for n p r to show that zero factorial is equal to one. And what we're going to do here is find n p n. So we are going to choose all of the available objects to form the permutation. Sorry, to count the number of permutations that are there. So we have then n factorial. And of course, in the denominator, we have n minus n factorial. Okay, so this will simplify to just n factorial over 0 factorial. Now, from the previous section, we know that if we permutate all of the available objects to find the number of permutations that we have, we have n factorial, and that is, again, from the last section, so 4.2. So therefore, um, we know that 0 factorial must have been equal to 1. 
otherwise uh, n factorial divided by 0 factorial cannot be equal to n factorial. Yeah, so 0 factorial is once again equal to 1. So next we have example number three. So we have um, passwords that can be made using digits from zero to nine, and then and or any letters from the alphabet. They are case sensitive, so um, upper and lower case count separately, and then each character can only be used once. So what that means is we have 10 digits, plus 2 times the 26 letters. And the 2 here, again, is for upper and lower case. Which means, in total, there are 62 characters to choose from. Now the password can be anywhere from five characters to seven characters long. So there are three cases. There is the first case of just five characters. So we have 62 um, characters and we're gonna pick five of them. So 62 P5. And using a calculator or Applying the formula, we know that this is 62 factorial divided by 62 minus 5 factorial. So that simplifies to just 62 factorial over 57 factorial. which works out to be 776520240. And that's the first case. So in the second case, we have 62, and then we are going to have uh, six characters for our passwords. Again, using a calculator, we get 44. Two six one six five three six eight zero. See, so these numbers are going to be very large. And finally, the last case, the full seven characters, even a bigger number in this case. And now, because the password can be five characters long or six characters long or seven characters long, we're going to add all three of these together to get our final answer. So just to indicate that to the side here with addition signs and total is going to be two, five, two, three, six, nine, zero, Seven eight zero, and then zero 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 uh, passwords. Okay, so now aside from introducing cases, um, another way to make the complicate uh, make the questions more complicated is by using conditions. So let's look at example number four. So it says here, in a used car lot, seven different car models are to be parked close to the street. Um, so the first condition is that the three red cars must be parked so that there's a red car on each end, which we can see here and here, so one and three. And the third car, so the middle car, is also red. And then it asks how many ways can the seven cars be parked? So the three red cars can be um, 
arranged in a few different ways. Three, we have three red cards, and we're going to permutate it, and there are three of them. So that's just going to be three factorial, which we know is going to be six. So that's just for the red cards. For all the other cards, there is, um, sorry, there are one, two, three, four, four not red cards. And so that will be 4p4, which is just 4 factorial, which we know is 24. Now, by the fundamental counting principle, we know that if there are 6 ways to do one thing and 24 ways to do something else, um, there are going to be 144, so the product, uh, ways to do both. So there are 144 arrangements if the cards are to be arranged in that way. So for B, uh, it's a little bit more complicated. It says the three red cards must be parked side by side. And so how many ways can the seven cards be parked? So the three red cards are grouped together. So just like before, we have three P three, which of course, it's just three factorial, so that's going to be, once again, six. So as a group, uh, these three red cars can go in front of the four other cars, and they're kind of treated as one object. So it's important to note that that's how it works. So I'm going to write that down. The red cars are grouped together. And treated as one object. Which means, in addition to the permutations within the group of red cars, we also have the not red cars plus the group. So that's five different um, distinguishable objects, and we need to figure out how many ways are there to arrange them. So here this is. We also have 5p5, so that's 5 factorial, which is 120. And once again, the five is from the four not red cards or non red cards plus the one group of cards. So now, just like before, we have six permutations for the red cards and then 100 and 20 permutations for the four not red cards plus the group. And if we multiply those together, we get 720 arrangements. Okay, so the next question, number five, is about creating permutations or arrangements with and without repetition. So in the first case, uh, we are going to make a nine digit number um, that uses the digit zero to nine with no, rep uh, sorry, with repetitions. So that's simply gonna be 10 digits to choose from, but we're gonna choose them nine times. So that's 10 multiplied by 10 multiplied by 10, nine times over, or just 10 to the ninth power. And that's going to be one zero 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 social insurance numbers. Now, if we're looking at no repetitions, then we have ten digits to choose from. Sorry, to um, yeah, to pick from, and then we're going to only pick nine of them. So that's ten p nine. So that's 10 factorial over 10 minus 9 factorial, or really just 10 factorial 
over 1 factorial, which is, of course, just 10 factorial, which gives us 3, and then 6 to 8, 8, 0, 0 total insurance numbers. And that's it. So um, we looked at the permutation formula. So that's once again n factorial over n minus r factorial. And we looked at how um, we can have different scenarios involving the formula. So for example, cases as an example number three, uh, conditions like an example number four. And we also looked at what happens when we have arrangements created with and without repetition, like the example we just saw in example number five. And that's it for today. So once again, thank you for listening.